and gentlemen how are you we meet again guess what i'm going to bring to to you today my name by the my name is rosaria wong welcome to adult education ingredient today the topic is how to conduct group learning in the workshop <music> Today, the research and finding was done by Will in 1997. So for workshop uh, planning and understanding the motivation and culture in workshop design, watch Implementing Workshop Strategies Part 1 from the link above. For awesome suggestions and advices, please put me through the link below as I will bring you uh, awesome insights into what you need for your profession and your organization. So group Let's get back to the topic now. So group learning decenters the uh, classroom and shift responsibility from the teacher or the facilitator to the learner. The facilitators of small groups should be prepared to use some a little bit of authority. As also we, we as a facilitator, we should understand that uh, very often the discussion may not go as planned and the group may have some other ideas and although the facilitator is an expert in certain area but he or she sometimes still cannot understand or appreciate fully the needs the pressure and the limitations on how the learning should work so a skillful trainer or facilitator should be uh, flexible enough to adapt the new materials his materials to the needs of the audience and allow the group dynamics to unfold for group learning and workshop uh, and residential workshop watch implementing workshop strategies part two from the link above also subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything as i bring you new insights new ingredients and new topics every monday isn't it good so let's get back to the topic again so we'll suggest some valuable ideas for effective group learning but it depends on four factors so what are the four factors number one is the group structure and group size number two is a group process and number three is how are you going to warm up the group and number four is uh, are you able to clarify the expectations and um, the ground rule okay i'm going to explain uh, each one of them first one group size and structure so the optimized size of a, a small group in most situations is four to five people it is large enough to offer a variety of perspectives and still small enough for every participant in the group to participate with one another and interact with one another however however it becomes increasingly difficult to offer to ensure productive participation if a group is larger than six people ideally groups should be um, heterogeneous concerning the age the race and the background the gender and the interest as a diverse um, uh, group offered a rich context through the exchange uh, ideas of different points of views among the group member and also um, through understanding better understanding with each other and also a challenge uh, to learn the unfamiliar and also it is uh, it offers a reflective reflective uh, of the realistic of the business world so it actually shows the realistic of the how the business world is like okay now we come to group process facilitators play a role of model that facilitates the group learning facilitators as as an um, expert in for example in the following are the for example to even out the participants involvement in the discussion to use interesting tasks to so as to maximize the group members enthusiasm and also to use effective closure and make sure to follow up the discussion also keep an attention on the process of group learning 
allowing time for introductions, explanation, and questioning and debriefing. Facilitator also provide clear guidelines and model appropriate behavior. These are the group process, okay? For distance workshop and evaluation of workshop watch implementing workshop strategies on the link from the link uh, so G part three on the from the link above. Sorry. So let's get back to the um, um, point three now. So how do you warm up the group? So in the initial stages of group development, members become acquainted and try to define the task at hand. So it is therefore important to allow a few minutes for the group members to introduce each other and to forge a group identity. It is a method to build trust and also depend on one another within the group and also it is a, um, a good way to icebreaker it actually is a good method to uh, build trust among the group member and icebreaker can be um, in the form of questionnaires such as topic and tasks uh, that is unrelated to the real issue so according to Will, icebreaker is a very good method to share among uh, the group member uh, and about the information and allow them to relax and share among each other more comfortably okay now next one we come to the number four point four to clarify expectations and the ground rule so what is it for example clearly defines the and or spend the goals and guidelines like promoting uh, industrial safety for learning new um, technologies and also creating a new venture or new vision so the task describes exactly what the group uh, is to do and expect to do and what everybody in the group should do or expect to do. If the task involves several steps, it should be in written and the disputes to each person in the group. And describe how the task and um, the exercise will end. Will it end in presentation? Will it end in a discussion? Or will it end in a test or stimulation? Just remember that not everybody can um, interact effectively in the group and also remember cooperation is not an innate form of human quality. So the facilitator should provide an overview, overview of the behavior supportive of the group learning. That's how you clarify expectation and ground rule in the uh, group learning in the workshop, okay? Finally, the golden hints. What are the golden hints for effective group learning in the workshop? Number one is to reserve judgment. Number two is to offer feedback uh, to one another and be willing. Uh, number three is to be willing to take risks and venture into new ideas. And number four is to encourage uh, the participants to speak and uh, to participate and to ask questions. And number five is if any new uh, conflicts uh, emerge, you should um, take this as an opportunity for learning, okay? Conflicts leads to new learning, that's all. And that's all for my topic today. For awesome insights and suggestions, put me through the link below as I will bring, give you awesome suggestions and advice into what you need for your profession and your organization. And also hit the button to subscribe to my channel so you, you will not miss anything every week, every Monday as I bring you new topic, new ideas, new ingredients for your profession and your organization. Thank you for tuning in today and until next time and goodbye.